to an alphabet of fairy by tales of fey and folk and this time it is the letter C. In this snippet of folklore we will look at the Cloricorn, the Cairn Maiden and Coleman Grey. The Cloricorn is an Irish fairy from Munster, pretty much unknown in the north of the country and akin to the Leprechaun. He is a menace, raiding wine cellars, taking sheep and dogs to ride throughout the night. He is also a shoemaker, usually creating shoes made of metal. The sound of his hammer can often be heard tap tap tapping as he practices his craft. He is a wizened little old fellow, dressed in green with huge buttons and buckles. He is also fond of wearing huge tricorn hats. Often he can be heard whistling as he works. However, should he be sighted by a human, he will disappear in a flash. The Chloricorn always knows where buried treasure is, and should a human keep watch to see where the fairy creature has hidden his stash and left an instinctive broken twig, or maybe tied a little cloth. Once the human has left, the Chloricorn will multiply these signs over and over and over all around the area so the human has no chance of stealing the Chloricorn's loot. The Chloricorn always carries a little money pouch and in this bag he keeps his lucky shilling. Once spent, this coin always returns to his purse. A crafty fellow, he also has a duplicate bag with a false copper coin and should anyone try to rob him, it will be this purse that the thief makes off with. He has a deep love of whiskey and tobacco. Indeed, many tiny clay pipes and pieces of pipes have been found where it is known that the Chloricorns frequent. Usually this is fairy mounds or nearby fairy trees. The Chloricorn also knows the secret of brewing heather wine also. He's a clever fellow indeed. The Cairn Maiden is a Scottish fairy woman who was known for an act of revenge. On the Isle of Mull there once lived two sisters, Dark Ailsa and lovely Margaret. Margaret had a secret. She had a fairy lover who would visit her to court her. Unable to keep this romantic secret any longer, she told her sister Ailsa, but swore Ailsa to secrecy. However, dark Ailsa could not hold her tongue, and before long, the whole Isle of Mull knew of Margaret's secret. The fairy man was so offended that he never returned to Margaret. She was heartbroken. She wandered the island, searching for her lover, unable to rest or have any peace. She grew to hate Ailsa and cursed her. All the descendants of Ailsa would have bad fortune. Ailsa thought nothing of it. Eventually Ailsa married and gave birth to a son called Torquil. Margaret was heard to mutter that Torquil would climb higher and reap better than any other man. And this came to pass. Torquil grew strong with the strength of seven men. This would be a thing that would lead to his doom. One year the corn was golden ripe. Full heads of corn 
ready for the reaping. In the fields there was a cairn, a small hill, and the cairn maiden had her home here. She came forth from her fairy hill one night and reaped the corn around the cairn with the strength of seven men. Tor Quiltock umbrage at this. This was a challenge from the fairy maiden. He waited on another night to watch for her appear from the cairn and begin her reaping. As she began her work, he took his own sickle and began to reap the corn at the same time, challenging her to a duel. All night the fairy maiden and Torquil cut the corn, him keeping a close eye on her progress and determined to beat her. At last the first light of morning lit the skies, and by now they were side by side, and only one sheaf of corn was left. Torquil reached forward and cut it down. He turned to her and told her he and his family would know no hardship that winter with all this corn cut down. The cairn maiden, fairy, turned to him and spoke. It was bad luck to cut the corn maiden herself by the first light of Monday morning. At that second, Torquil dropped down dead at the corn maiden's feet. The fairies had their revenge on his mother. Coleman Grey is the name of a small Cornish pixie or pisky from the southwest of England who was adopted by a human family. Nearby a cottage, a tiny pisky was found looking miserable and forlorn, speaking a language that nobody could understand. The family who found the tiny creature were afraid to take the little pixie, but even more so, they were terrified that if they did not care for it, the fairies would be furious at their neglect. And so the family took the little fellow into their home. Little by little the pixie gained its strength under the careful care of the Cornish family and indeed he became a firm favourite of them all over time. Even though he was a fairy creature they came to love him dearly and he became quite a jolly little fellow in the house and seemed quite happy. One day a strange voice was heard outside the house, a voice that called Coleman Grey, Coleman Grey. And at this sound, the tiny pixie jumped up. My daddy has come, he shouted. Within an instant, he had run to be with his father and Coleman Grey was never seen again. I hope you enjoyed this time's telling of tales. Take care, brightest of blessings and remember, don't play with the fairy folk or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.